we're going to talk a lot of LSU today. Obviously, Michael Clayton will be here in the se- in the uh, in the second hour. Uh, but there was some Saints news that 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 I wanted to get your your reaction to was yeah. uh, was Larry Warford being released by New Orleans going into the weekend. We knew about the draft picks and some of the focus that they had on the offensive line. But now that you've seen these moves, what do you, what are your thoughts? Um, I was surprised though. If you read uh, a lot of people that cover this team, like Cat Terrell, uh, Holder, Duncan, like whoever, right? Um, Amy just. Uh, I, I was surprised that they, they don't seem too surprised. And, and I get it when people might say, well, T-Bob, you're an idiot. They drafted Ruiz, right? And Sean Payton even said after the draft, you don't take a guy in that round to be a backup. Uh, and then, he, but, but, but my deal was at the end of that statement, he said, Larry's going to have to compete. And I just figured um, you had already, you, you'd already gotten through the majority of the Warford contract, right? He's going into his final year. Uh, I don't know if this is Breeze's final year, but, you know, definitely could be. It feels like it might be. And so and I just figured even if they weren't happy with Warford, even if he lost that job, which I guess they've been upset with him for his weight for a couple of years mm-hmm. now. Um, he obviously really struggled in that Vikings game, which I think has stood out in their mind quite a bit. Uh, but I just figured they would have rolled with him anyway, right? Because you, you, this is what we talked about. You had incredible depth there when you had McCoy, Pete, Reese, Warford, uh, Easton, like you felt good about that. Now, now that that is maybe the piece in this that is under the surface a little bit is that Easton played pretty well in that Vikings game, and maybe they're feeling like, you know, him or Reese, they like their options there, and that and then that was just one person too many, and and maybe it was even if it is the ultimate insurance policy, maybe it was just one player too many. You can't commit that many uh, that many roster spots to the interior on game day, and. So they end up cutting Larry Warford. And it's crazy because this is a guy who is still going to be pretty highly valued around the league and um, a, a move that not a lot of people saw come, or at least, you know, I didn't see coming. And the, the the one part that I'm still trying to parse through, so it makes sense from a roster standpoint, like I said, because maybe there was just too many guys to commit to Breeze. But I wonder what they're going to do with those savings, right? Because free agency is basically over. You don't think they're going to, like, bring in anybody else. But in cutting Warford... Uh, you do save $7.75 million. Now, they have some extensions to pay guys. Maybe that's where that ends up going. But, uh, but yeah, Larry Warford, no longer a member of the New Orleans Saints. So I think this is a direct result of what they have pending on the books and what yeah. they have to take care of. I mean, you're looking at extensions, long-term extensions for Alvin Kamara, Ryan Ramchick, Marshawn Lattimore, yeah. De- uh, Demario Davis yeah. uh, is in that mix. As well, uh, as you said, Warford was due a base salary of seven point six five million. Well, I think I think it would have been. I think his cap hit was like twelve million, but you saved that seven seven five. And you and you save four million in cap space this year, right? Uh, I thought you saved. This says for Cat Terrell's article in the Athletic says uh, the Saints saved seven point seven five against the cap by cutting him instead of maybe keeping a backup that would have been you know kind of for twelve point eight. And so what you account about two million for your draft class? Yeah. And 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 then I think you start working on some of these extensions for some I, for some I, of this group. So I will say this: I went on with Reggie Flood yesterday in New Orleans, and 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 we talked about this. But it's 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 really hard as just a you know a casual that sits here just talks about sports to try to predict what the Saints will do financially because Kai Harley and Mickey Loomis are like. I mean, if you like Ozark, wizards. If you like Ozark, yeah. they are Jason. Baker. They are Marty. I mean, they 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 are Marty. Like they can make money do and Wendy whatever. Yeah, they can make money do whatever they want money to do, right? And so I don't know exactly what they've planned with this seven million dollars, but I know that Mickey Loomis can stretch seven point seven five in savings about as long as any GM in the league can. So we'll we'll see if they get into some of those extensions uh, ahead of the season. Make make some of their star players. Uh, you know, feel good, feel feel happy going into the year. But, um, yeah, I mean, and, and the, the other interesting part of all of this is that now that Warford's gone, the pressure on all those other guys that I named ratchets up even a little bit more. Like, I'm not worried about McCoy. I'm not worried about Pete. But Ruiz, is he ready to come in here? Because, I mean, the Saints think he is. And I trust the Saints scouting department. Um, how could you not if you just look at what they've sure. done since Jeff Ireland came back, sure. especially with their early picks. Yeah. Right, their early picks, almost all – hitting recently but you still never know and so if he isn't ready is Easton the guy is he ready to be that guy we'll we'll have to see but 
you're one of those players, man. Playing time's up for grabs, and the ability to make even more money is up for grabs.